protection. Let's talk about that protection for a second. So it's the best deal going. And this is not you know, me talking. This is just, if you think about it, the, the government wants to encourage innovation. So whether you're in Singapore, whether you're in the UK, whether you're somewhere else in the EU, uh, the idea of incorporation was a revolution when they came up with it, which you know several hundred years ago now. Think about it. If you invest in IBM, if you invest in Tesla, if you invest in, I don't know, who do you want to invest in? Uh, who do you want to invest in? Denanos. Denan I don't know Denanos, but okay, if you want to invest in Denanos. They can, they can do terrible things. I mean, horrible things, really shockingly bad things, and you are not liable. How is this possible? You know, you, you, let's say you invest in Monsanto. I would not advise doing that, but let's say you invest in Monsanto, and let's say you give them a million dollars, and then Monsanto takes your million dollars and they poison a bunch of people. You're not responsible at all. Not at all. You're just a shareholder. You've got no responsibility. None. Interestingly, the people running the corporation nine times out of ten also have no responsibility. So the corporation can do horrible things, but the people running the corporation are scot-free. And then finally, the corporation itself has, what, what can we say, it has no body, it can't be put in jail, it has no lifespan, it goes on forever. So, and yet we've, uh, in America at least, and in the UK and other places, we've given corporations a lot of rights. So for example, free speech. We've, we've decided in the United States that you cannot limit the free speech of a corporation. Uh, they're, they're, the, it's almost as if the corporation is a person that gains a bunch of rights, even though a corporation cannot be put in jail, has no, um, has no lifespan, uh, and has no sort of corporeal presence. So this may strike you as good, this may strike you as bad, but here's the point, for about $100, you get all of this. You can absolve yourself of any personal liability, you can absolve your investors of any personal liability. All you need to do is incorporate or set up a company. All you need to do, in other words, is entity formation. Hey. What's the difference between both? So like if I, for example, incorporate uh, on comparison to me forming a company, what, what's the difference? Right. So again, let's talk about your sort of three big types. Uh, an LLC is not a corporation. It's a, it's a partnership. Okay. So uh, it's people coming together. You may see law firms described as an LLP or an uh, LLC, the L and the L don't stand for ladies love, it stands for um, <laughs> limited liability, right? So literally it's those first two points. Um, if you set up an LLC or if you set up an LLP, which you wouldn't do because you're not a, prof I assume you're not a, a lawyer or an accountant, uh, you're, you're absolved of liability even though you don't have what's technically called a corporation. Now what becomes a corporation? You issue stock, right? So an, uh, an LLC has memberships, they've got members, uh, an, L, uh, an incorporation, on the other hand, issues stock. Now, you may say, wait a second, uh, but I'm just starting off. I wouldn't issue stock. You're probably thinking of a stock exchange, like a publicly floated stock. Uh, that's not necessary. You can have a small company, as small as you like. It still has stock. Why? Because you want to encourage investors to come in. Or employees. You want to grant employees uh, options. Now, these options may not be publicly traded. They may be illiquid, meaning, hey, it's a piece of paper. I can't get any cash for it. But nevertheless, the corporation itself has issued shares. Now generally, when you create a corporation, if you don't change it, it's going to be taxed twice. First, it's going to be taxed on its profits. So this is the corporate tax rate. And then whatever is left you know, to, the, to the owners, maybe you distribute it out, that will be taxed a second time. You might say, well, that's a terrible deal. No, oh, it's not a great deal. So if you have an LLC or if you elect to be taxed as an S corporation, which has very severe limitations if you're not a US citizen, but uh, if you elect to be a tax as an S corporation, then all of the money flows through to the owners and they're only taxed as their personal income. So then income tax applies. Let's do that again. Company comes in, makes $100, and it's a C corporation. C like Charlie, right? It's a corporation. By the way, by default again, it's, a C, it's going to be a C corporation if you elect to create a corporation, right? $100 flows in, you're taxed at the corporate tax rate. Based on that, uh, depending upon the polity that you're in, where you are, uh, you, you then re retain a certain amount of money, okay? Uh, that money is then used, that profit is then used to, to be distributed in dividends or salaries or anything else, and that's taxed a second time. So when you get it, then you pay dividend tax or personal income tax. If you contrast that with an LLC or with an S corporation, that entire $100 is not taxed at the corporate level. 
it all flows through and then is taxed at the personal income level. Okay? So those are the two different forms. So you might say, well, why would anyone want to do a C corporation? C corporations are essentially more grown up. Uh, an S corporation or an LLC, they've got some real limitations on them. If you do get investors, if uh, DFJ comes and invests in you, they will want you to be a C corporation and not an S corporation or an LLC. I saw a question over there. In general, in general, there are exceptions. But, but to what extent is there no personal liability? Like, can I poison someone? Can I, uh, I say, as a company, if I make it as a hundred dollars, I mean, yeah, that's that that's just doesn't make it, uh, the United States a safe place to do. Yeah, so that that's a great question. Um, if I'm, I don't know, let's say I'm Jeff Bezos and I'm running Amazon, and in my capacity as the person running Amazon. I go down to the truck warehouse, and you know what I do? I cut the brake cables of all the trucks, and I allow them to run willy-nilly in the streets, crushing pedestrians and crashing into rivers and that kind of thing. I'm going to be personally liable as Jeff Bezos, for sure. Right? That is an independent act of malice, and so forth. If, on the other hand, I'm Jeff Bezos, and I set a really tight delivery schedule, and it's so tight that the people driving the trucks are getting into accidents and kill exactly the same number of people, more than likely, I'm not at all liable, right? I, I simply was trying to execute my business judgment. Now, could those people uh, who, who lost their husbands and, and wives and children in these accidents then come and try to sue Amazon? Of course they could, but, then, but not Jeff, even though Jeff made the decision. Precisely right. They can sue the corporate entity, but can they sue Jeff? No. Monsanto. And they can only tap into the corporate's resources. Uh, you're, 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 you're reading my mind. Exactly right. So Jeff may have a billion dollars. Amazon may have no profits at that time, have no ability to pay. Uh, well, that's fine for Jeff, right? You can only sue the company up to the limit of what the company has in it. And so therefore, one of the requirements of incorporating is you must fund the company. To what level? Well, if you're starting a gym, you know, maybe a few hundred dollars, thousands of dollars. If you're starting a business that hauls away nuclear waste, more money. Uh, b but there's a, a certain amount of flexibility and judgment. And again, if that nuclear waste spills on someone, you are not personally liable. Unless you did something like cut the brake cables of the, of the truck. Only the business is liable, and then only to the amount invested in it. Now, you may think this is good, you may think this is horrifying, but the reason that, com that countries set up this kind of a regime is so that more people will invest in businesses, and so that more people will try to start businesses. After all, let's take the flip. If you thought, gee, I could be sued by a lot of people personally, and they would take away my money, and they would put me into bankruptcy court. You might think twice about starting a business. The, the government says, forget that. We won't let them sue you. We will block them. We will put every obstacle in their way. All you have to do is file some paperwork with us, pay a very small fee, and you're good to go. It's really the best deal going. So incorporating or setting up a company, setting up an LLC, limiting your liability is an incredible deal. And the only reason that the government extends this possibility to you is because they want more people to start businesses and they don't want them to say, gee, if I do this, I could get sued personally, therefore I won't do it. In the interest of time, I'm going to move on quickly, but let's come back to you at the end because I know we're doing a Q&A.